From fields of corn and pasture to majestic oak woodlands, ecosystems are ever-changing around us. If left unmanaged, this landscape would eventually turn from grassland into scrub and finally into woodland, forming what we call the Climax community. This is known as plant succession. And not only would vast changes happen on the surface of the soil, changes are also happening beneath our feet in the soil. At each successional stage, the life within the soil alters alongside the flora and fauna of the ecosystem. This change occurs because the biology with the soil is intricately connected to the ecosystem and its processes, and so adapts alongside the changing environment. What this means is that we tend to find a very different biological makeup at different points along the successional scale. Grassland, for instance, tends to be dominated by bacteria, which love green, luscious, leafy materials such as grass and leaves. And when they break these down, they produce compounds such as nitrates, which the plants in this ecosystem love. Moving along the scale, towards a more woody environment where you find trees and hard stemmed plants, the soils tend to be dominated by fungi. Fungi have adapted to be able to break down lignin, which is a key component of wood. And in doing so, they are able to produce ammonium and ammonium is favoured by the plants in this environment. The process of plant and soil succession is continually in action. It's a process that has been happening for millions of years and there's no stopping it. Understanding this process is fundamental to us as growers, as it enables us to shape the soil conditions in a way that benefits the plants we want to grow. So how can we use this to our advantage? Firstly, we need to understand what successional stage our plants are at. Both bacteria and fungi are crucial for creating healthy soils. They both break down organic matter and release nutrients into the soil. But one organism is likely to be much more abundant than the other. And it's this dominance that really tells us what kind of soil we're working with. Most vegetables, particularly annuals and herbaceous plants, prefer bacterially rich soils. On the other hand, fruit trees will do better in a fungally dominated soil. Therefore, it's important to understand what type of plant you are growing so you can determine what fungi to bacteria ratio you require. Once you know whether your plants prefer a bacterially dominated soil or a fungally dominated soil, you can then start to shape the soil to your requirements. To create bacterial soils, which are favoured by your typical garden vegetables, you need to incorporate nitrogen into the soil. Stay away from synthesised fertilisers, as these will actually disrupt the biological balance. Instead, use a compost or compost extract that has been made using lots of green matter and manure. Vermicompost is a brilliant alternative, but whatever you choose, make sure the compost is well rotted first, or you may actually end up sucking nitrogen out of the soil instead. For more woody plants like fruit and nut trees, a compost or mulch made from woody matter is ideal. Not only will it protect the soil underneath, but it will act as a food bank for all of the fungi in the soil. You're essentially trying to recreate the forest floor here. Add a layer of about three to four inches around your trees. This will help suppress any weeds and grass too. Most importantly, fungi hate to be disturbed, so avoid lots of digging and compacting around the area. Because of the way we manage the land, we are constantly trying to press pause on succession. Whether it be maintaining a lawn, planting a crop year after year, or preserving a heather moorland, it requires constant effort in order to maintain the status quo. When we disturb the soil or turn it over, we actually end up rewinding the process, taking the ecosystem back to day zero. Essentially, we're creating a landslide event, and in doing so, we are opening up the ground to a whole load of new early successional plants. This bare earth is exactly what those plants are looking for. 
Of course, some soil disturbance in the garden is unavoidable and is essential for getting plants into the ground. But if you can keep these disturbances to a minimum and maintain a crop in the ground so you're not leaving the soil bare, there will be less opportunity for unwanted plants to establish themselves. The magical thing is, with this knowledge we can cultivate soil that's suitable for the plants we want to grow meaning that we can grow plants that are vigorous and healthy, as well as managing the soil in a way that's beneficial for the whole planet. For more information on the biology within the soil, see our other videos on the rhizosphere and the soil food web. Look out for upcoming videos on how to make soil microbes work for you.